Tour de Cruise Ports, the Azores. The Azores, Table of Contents. Dr. Sidney Sokloff, DRS, CIDNEY22 at gmail.com. 2022. Narration by Dr. Sidney Sokloff. Zoe Phonemes. And Nathan Coltov. For a more complete discussion of YouTube navigation, please go to this video using the link at the last chapter. Chapter 1 Introduction to the Azores. Click on this link to see and hear a video of the beautiful Azores. In Portuguese, the Azores is Os Azores. This is the flag of Portugal. These are some questions that I hope we will answer about the Azores. The Azores are an archipelago composed of nine major islands. In the North Atlantic the full Portuguese name for the Azores is Arquipelago das Azores. The word Azores in Portuguese means Gus Hawk. The first sailors reaching the Azores saw birds that they mistakenly thought were Gus Hawks. However, they were actually buzzards. There never were any goshawks in the Azores. The Azores flag was officially adopted in 1979. The colors used, blue and white, are said to be derived from a royal Portuguese flag. Now out of use. It features the emblem of Portugal in the upper left corner. The bird on the current Azores flag doesn't look like a goshawk at all. But it is meant to be one. And it also doesn't look like a buzzard. The Azores are an autonomous province of Portugal and have their own local, unofficial anthem. The nine stars stand for the nine islands of the Azores so Jorge, Santa Maria, Teixeira, Graciosa, Fial, São Miguel, Corvo, Pico, and Flores. Chapter 2 Where are the Azores? The Azores are almost midway between North America and Europe. This makes them a key link to air travel and cable communication. Cables from the Americas, Europe, and Africa meet in the Azores. There is also a major refueling station for transatlantic aircraft in the Azores, and a stop for transatlantic cruise ships. The Azores are roughly 1,000 miles, or 1,600 kilometers west of Portugal, and are a part of that nation. The Azores are about 2,400 miles, or 5 hours flying time from the east coast of North America. The islands have a total land area that is only about half the size of the entire state of Rhode Island. The population of the Azores is about 250,000. The Azores stretch for about 400 miles or 640 kilometers from Corvo and Flores Islands in the west to Santa Maria in the east. The islands are divided into three widely separated groups. The eastern group consists of São Miguel, Santa Maria, and the Formica Silence. The central group is Fial, Pico, São Jorge, Teixeira, and Graciosa. The northwestern group is Flores and Corvo. The capital of the Azores is Ponta Delgada on the island of São Miguel. The Azores are famous for deep sea fishing, local cheeses, red and white wine production, and many varieties of tropical fruit. The islands are becoming an increasingly popular tourist destination. In addition to the Azores, Another Portuguese possession in the Atlantic is the Madeira Islands. Chapter 3 What time is it in the Azores? Here are the standard time zones of the world. The Azores are in the Azores time zone that is at UTC-1. That is one hour behind GMT or London Standard Time. Or four hours ahead of New York City. Daylight saving time starts on March 31st, and the time becomes Azores Summer Time or AZOST, 
which is at UTC, but still one hour behind the UK which also has DST. Chapter 4 The Formation of the Azores Now let's see how the Azores got there. Way out in the Atlantic Ocean. And far from any continental land masses. The answer has to do with an outstanding feature on the floor of the Atlantic Ocean called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is an immense median mountain range extending throughout the length of the Atlantic, occupying the center third of the ocean bed, and reaching 1,000 miles in width. Although of tremendous proportions, this is just the Atlantic portion of an oceanic ridge that encircles the world. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is like a submerged mountain range that extends through the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Almost from pole to pole. The Azores lie on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. A fault line that runs for some 10,000 miles from beneath the northern ice cap southwards. And turns east around the southern tip of Africa to meet with the Indian Ocean Ridge. The Earth's crust is made up of a number of tectonic plates floating on a semi-liquid mantle. Several plates of the Earth's crust meet along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, the North American Plate, South American Plate, Eurasian Plate, and the African Plate. The nine islands of the Azores are formed from the upper sections of old volcanoes in the Mid-Atlantic on the ocean bed the tectonic plates are pulling apart. The gap between the plates is filled by molten volcanic material that rises from the Earth's mantle and continuously forms new oceanic crust. This extrusion wells up and forms a ridge, and the seafloor spreads. These mid-ocean ridges occur beneath all the major oceans. This animation loop shows how lava from the Earth's core comes up through a crack in the Earth's crust or mantle to form a volcano and produces a new land mass in the ocean. Whereas the depths in the Atlantic Ocean are generally down to 20,000 feet, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge has a depth usually less than 5,000 feet, and in some places reaches close to just a few hundred feet. Toward the northern end of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is Iceland, the largest land made from oceanic crust. The Azores in the Mid-Atlantic is located near the place where the North American, African, and Eurasian plates meet. Beneath the Azores, the three plates meet in a T-shaped triple junction. The North American, Eurasian and African plates meet at a point between the western and central group of islands between Flores and Fayal. Flores and Corvo are on the American plate. Graciosa, So Jorge, Teixeira and So Miguel lie on the Eurasian plate in Faye, Pico, Santa Maria and the Formigas islets tend to move towards joining the African plate. The frequent seismic tremors felt in the islands are mostly caused by magma flowing up the cracks left in the Earth's crust as the plates separate. This shows that So Miguel, Teixeira, and Graciosa are actually right on the rift at the boundary of the Eurasian Plate and the African Plate. As the ocean bed tectonic plates are pulling apart, molten volcanic material or magma in the form of lava flows up through the cracks and forms volcanoes. The lava spreads out and solidifies and forms new islands. All of this activity means the Azores are still growing in 1811. About a mile off the coast of So Miguel a new island appeared. It was 300 feet high and about one mile long and took about a month to create. The islands rise steeply from shores lined with rock and pebble debris. These islands are heavily forested and are ringed by long, sandy beaches. The highest point on the Azores is the Pico Volcano. Pico Volcano has a height of 7,713 feet or 2,351 meters. The unstable geologic nature of the Azores is indicated by numerous earthquakes and volcanic eruptions in 1522 the town of Villafranca do Campo, then capital of São Miguel, was buried during a massive convulsion. 
and as recently as 1957 and 1958 the Kapolin has eruption enlarged Fial Island. Chapter 5 History of the Azores And now, a little bit about the history of the Azores. Our story starts in early 15th century Venice, and the spice trade with the Spice Islands in the Far East. Spices were very important to Europeans because of food preservation and the tastes they added to their meager diet, especially the meats that were well beyond their expiration date, due to lack of any kind of refrigeration or preservation. From the Spice Islands, now Indonesia, in Asia, the spices went across the Indian Ocean and up the Red Sea by Arab traders to Alexandria in Egypt. From Alexandria the spices were shipped to Venice, and then distributed to all of northern and western Europe. By the early 15th century, Venice was a very powerful and wealthy city-state. Part of Venice's great wealth came from trading in the spices of the East, which it obtained from Arab traders in Alexandria and sold to northern and western European buyers and distributors at exorbitant prices. Venice came to monopolize the spice trade in Europe between 1200 and 1500, through its dominance over Mediterranean seaways to ports such as Alexandria. The financial incentive to discover an alternative to Venice's monopoly control of this lucrative business was perhaps the single most important factor, starting Europe's great age of exploration. The Europeans knew the origin of the spices reaching Alexandria. Unable to break the hold of Venice, they were determined in the last third of the 15th century to build ships and venture in search of a route to the spice-producing countries of Asia. So began the famed voyages of discovery. Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama found a route around the southern tip of Africa. The Portuguese were first in the race and the first to bring spices from India to Europe by way of the Cape of Good Hope in 1501. For more than 100 years Portugal was the dominant power, eventually yielding to English and Dutch enterprise and conquest. For European commercial interests it was an age of rewarding success, which broke the monopoly of Venice, overcame the Muslim domination of the spice trade, created a voluminous trade and a great variety of merchandise between Europe and the Far East, and opened up a new world. One early result of the Portuguese explorations was the discovery and settlement of the Azores. These islands were reputedly discovered about 1427 by Diogo de Senil, who sailed for the King of Portugal. No traces of any previous human habitation or visitation were found on any of the islands. Settlement began on Santa Maria about 1432 under Gonçalo Velho Cabral, a Portuguese official. So Miguel was settled in 1444, and Teixeira some years later. The name, Teixeira, came from the fact that it was the third island that was discovered. By the end of the 15th century all the islands were inhabited, and trade with Portugal became well established. From 1580 until 1640, the Azores, like the rest of Portugal, were subject to Spain. The islands were the rendezvous for the Spanish treasure fleets on their voyages home from the West Indies. Therefore, they became a theater of the maritime warfare between England under Elizabeth I against Spain and Portugal. The Treaty of Alcazabes confirmed Castilian control of the Canary Islands and Portuguese control of the Madeira, Azores and Cape Verde Islands. It was signed in 1479, between the monarchs of Castile and Aragon on one side, and the King of Portugal on the other side. Another result of the Treaty of Alcaçavash was that Brazil became Portuguese, while the rest of South America was given to Spain. The present-day Azores are organized as an autonomous region having the same status as the districts of continental Portugal but with special autonomous powers that are exercised by an elected regional assembly. 
The population is almost entirely Portuguese. The mild climate and fertile volcanic soil support fine vineyards, orchards, pastures, and gardens. The trade of the Azores had long been a Portuguese monopoly. But later, before World War II, it was shared by Great Britain, the United States, and Germany. The island's exports include canned fish, pineapples, wine and hand embroideries. The Azores inhabitants are mostly of Portuguese origin, and the predominant religion is Roman Catholicism. The Azores' principal seaports and cities are Ponta Delgada, Angra do Heraísmo, and Horta. Lages and Santa Maria became important air bases and centers of communication between the United States and Europe during World War II. And since 1951, by agreement with Portugal, the United States has maintained a NATO air base on Lages. Here are recent population figures for the Azores. The total population of the islands is around 250,000. We see that São Miguel Island has about half the total population São Miguel and Teixeira Island, when combined account for about three-fourths of the total population of the islands. The Azores have good agricultural land and a long growing season. However, because of the isolated nature of the islands, the economic opportunities for many Azoreans are limited, and many have chosen to emigrate to other countries, especially to the United States. Chapter 6 Where do most of the Azoreans live? The answer is surprisingly enough. In the United States, especially in California, about 350,000 Azoreans, or people of Azorean descent, now live in the United States. That's more people than live in the Azores today. Chapter 7 Climate of the Azores What should be expected in terms of the climate in the Azores? The climate of the Azores is influenced by a branch of the Gulf Stream, called the Azores Current. The Azores Current originates as a branch of the Gulf Stream, coming from the warm waters of the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, and then flowing up along the east coast of North America. In the North Atlantic waters, the Gulf Stream splits into the North Atlantic Drift and the Azores Current that flows southward and eventually spirals around to return to the region just north of the Caribbean Sea. The Azores is surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean, at the latitudes between 36 degrees to 39 degrees north. As might be expected from its location, and the proximity of the Gulf Stream, which passes near these islands, the Azores have a subtropical climate, with no temperature extremes. Well. Will it be hot, or will it be cold in the Azores? Here are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Punta Delgada. We see a very mild moderate climate without much seasonal variation. Here are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in Punta Delgada. Here is the average monthly rainfall in inches throughout the year in Punta Delgada. The midsummer months of June, July, and August are the dry season. Chapter 8 Scenes of the Azores now some scenes of the beautiful Azores. The Azores offer one of the best habitats in the world for marine mammals, with more than 20 identified species. The islands provide a natural aquarium in the middle of the Atlantic between Europe and North America. The sperm whales enjoy incomparable conditions. They are free of the threat of whalers, and are surrounded by clear waters and abundant food all year round. A true sanctuary. All these conditions have created a unique relationship between the sperm whale and the Azareans. Chapter 9 Ponta Delgada 
São Miguel Island. Here is São Miguel Island. São Miguel Island is about 40 miles long and only 10 miles wide. The main port in the Azores is Ponta Delgada. Ponta Delgada is the largest city of the Azores and is on the south side of São Miguel Island. Ponta Delgado is the commercial center of the Azores. A mild climate and lush vegetation have made Ponta Delgado an important winter tourist resort. The city population is 45,000 and 65,000 in the metropolitan area. Terminal Maritimo is the principal cruise facility. It is conveniently located just a five-minute walk from Avenida do Infante Don Enrique. The main street running along Ponta Delgada's harbor front. In addition, some ships may berth in the more remote outer breakwater. Depending on how far out on this arm the ship is docked, it can be a 10 to 20 minute walk into Ponta Delgada. This is Terminal Maritimo de Ponta Delgada. Here again is Terminal Maritimo de Ponta Delgada. Ponta Delgada exports pineapples, oranges, tea, wine, cereals, vegetables, and dairy products. Sugar refining and liquor distilling are its primary industries. The harbor of Ponta Delgada has a breakwater nearly a mile long and serves as a fueling supply station and offers minor repair facilities to transatlantic ships. Gonzalo Valle Cabral discovered the Azores in 1432 and served as the first governor. The city gates, Porta da Cidade, were constructed in the form of three arches during the 18th century. This is Porta da Cidade, and the Igreja Matriz de São Sebastião. Porta da Cidade. The old city gates are a landmark of Ponta Delgada in, the background is the Church Igreja Matriz de São Sebastião, built between 1531 and 1547. This is Avenida Marginal, which follows the coastline of Ponta Delgada. Here is Igreja de Santo Cristo. This is Igreja do Colegio. Here is the location of Igreja do Colegio. This is the church in the monastery Nossa Senhora da Esperança. The convent of Esperança and the church of Santo Cristo are located in the town center, near the Forte, or Fort, Sobras. Once a year, there is a famous procession to this church, for which emigrants from all over the world return to the island. This is Avenida Infante Henrique along the harbor at Ponta Delgada. The tourist information office is located here on the Avenida Infante Henrique. Here is Avenida Infante Henrique along the waterfront of Ponta Delgada. This is the old town hall of Ponta Delgada. This is another view of the old town hall of Ponta Delgada. Here is another view of the old town hall, city hall, of Ponta Delgada. This is Ponta Delgada. The Lagarda Tourist Trolley takes you to the most interesting historic and natural sites of Ponta Delgada and the surrounding area. There are five city tours, historical, heritage, gardens, outskirt and beach. All tours have a narration in English. The Lagarda Tourist Train Trolleys depart from Avenida Infante and Hique on the waterfront. The José do Canto Botanical Garden was planted in the middle of the 19th century. This private garden reveals a deep English Victorian influence, as well as a great botanical variety and an outstanding landscape beauty. The Antonio Borges Botanical Garden is famous for its collection of European and tropical trees. Chapter 10 Sao Miguel Island Now we will explore the rest of São Miguel Island beyond Ponta Delgada. Here are some scenes of beautiful São Miguel Island. These are scenes of São Miguel Island.
These are more scenes of So Miguel Island. These are more scenes of So Miguel Island. Almost any crop can grow in the rich volcanic soil of the Azores. Dairy farming is an important industry. Chapter 11 Cetsidades Volcanic Craters A major point of interest on So Miguel is the Sete Cetidae -Cet Volcanic Craters. The twin lakes of the Sete Cetidae -Cet Volcano and Crater are an ancient caldera created during the formation of the island of So Miguel. The village, of the same name, is located on the western edge of the crater. Sete J is at the western end of So Miguel Island. And from the port of Ponta Delgada to Sete J is a 26 kilometers or a 30 minute drive. This is another view of the western end of the island. Inside the crater, there is a blue lake or Lago Azul. Green Lake or Lago Verde, and Sotiago Lake. The major viewpoint to see the lakes is called Vista do Rey, the King's View, at an altitude of approximately 580 meters, around 1,740 feet. Here are the lakes, Vista do Rey, and the town of Cetese de J. Here is Blue Lake or Lago Azul, Green Lake or Lago Verde, and Sotiago Lake. These are the Sete Cita J craters. Chapter 12 Furnace Valley The Furnace Valley is a garden oasis at the bottom of a volcanic crater and is home to an incredible array of flora and fauna, bubbling fumaroles, volcanically heated thermal pools, and numerous cascading waterfalls. The Furnace Valley is at the eastern end of São Miguel Island, and a 47 kilometers or 45 minute drive from Ponta Delgada. Furnace Valley attractions include the beautiful Parque Terra Nostra, Lake Furnace, the boiling mud pits of Caldera de Perro Botelho, and a hot springs spa. The Furnace Valley is one of the richest hydrological areas in Europe, with 22 thermal springs. Furnace Lake offers volcanic fumaroles and hot springs along its margins. Parque Terra Nostra is a botanical garden in the Furnace Valley. It contains one of the largest collections in the world of camellias, with more than 600 different varieties. The foundation of this botanical garden dates back to 1780, when then the Consul of the United States on the island of Sao Miguel, Thomas Hickling, built this space next to his summer residence, then known as Yankee Hall. This park was considered one of the most beautiful in the world by Condé Nast Travel. The Furnace Hot Springs are one of the richest thermal areas in Europe, with 22 thermal springs. The small, but rich town of Ribe Grande is on the north coast, about 18 kilometers northeast of Ponta Delgada. It is picturesquely located on a volcanic plateau above the sea. The town's charming historic center has narrow streets with pretty examples of urban architecture from the 17th and 18th centuries, among which is the town hall, with its impressive exterior stairs. Particularly notable is the parish church of Espirito Santo from the 17th century, with its sumptuous facade. One of the most attractive Baroque structures in the archipelago. There is an interesting bridge with eight arches from the 18th century Ribeira Grande, still has the air of the prosperous times of the flax and wool spinning mills in the 18th century that were built along the river that made the richness of the town. Chapter 13 Fayal Island Fayal Island, known as the Blue Island has about 15,000 inhabitants, and its main municipal seat is the city of Horta. Different colors of blue decorate the houses, divide the fields and line the roadsides, giving Fayal the name of Blue Island. Here are scenes of Fayal Island. These are more scenes of Fayal Island.
This island was named Tercera because it was the third island to be discovered. Tercera is the second most populated Azorean island with 58,000 inhabitants, and the third biggest in surface area after Seo Miguel and Pico. Tercera's municipal seat is located in Angra do Heraísmo, where the Passos do Conselho, the city hall, a majestic construction of the 19th century, is an important example of the rich architectural patrimony of Angra. Angra do Heraísmo means Bay of Heroism in memory of the people who fought bravely, but lost to battle with the Spanish in the 16th century. Here are scenes of Teixeira Island. Lages is a U.S. Air Force base. Here are more scenes of Teixeira Island. Here are more scenes of Teixeira Island. Chapter 15 Pico Island, named for its imposing mountain or peak, is one of the most beautiful and underrated islands of the Azores. Only second to São Miguel in size, the mountain island stands majestically in the middle of the Azorean Central Group. At about 4.5 nautical miles from Fial Island and 11 miles from São Jorge Island, Pico is home to the highest mountain in Portugal which reaches an altitude of 7,700 feet, 2,351 meters. Chapter 16 Flores Island The island of Flores is the westernmost point of the Azores archipelago and of the European continent. Flores is about 15 miles from Colorvo. The two islands make up the western group of the archipelago. Flores has an area of around 55 square miles and about 4,000 inhabitants. The main Flores municipalities include Santa Cruz and Lages. Flores as well as Corvo are part of the North American tectonic plate, while all the other Azorean islands are on the European plate. The island of Flores has deep valleys and high peaks, lagoons bordered by hydrangeas, cliffs carved by grottoes, hot springs and the remains of old volcanoes. Flores Flowers takes its name from the great profusion of wildflowers, especially hydrangeas, which have large blue or pink petals, and small-sized botanical species, many of which are indigenous and part of the original flora. Pastures, farms and vineyards complete the makeup of the landscape of Flores Island. Corvo is the smallest island of the Azores. It has a surface area of only 7 square miles. The population of approximately 300 inhabitants is concentrated in the town of Vila Nova. Chapter 17 Azores Money Portugal is a member of the European Union and European Monetary Union and uses the euro as its official currency. Currency exchange rates can change daily. For the latest exchange rate click on this icon. This is the approximate exchange rate between the US dollar and the euro. This shows the exchange rate between the US dollar and the euro. This again shows the exchange rate between the US dollar and the euro. Chapter 18 Azorian Cuisine Now a look at Azorian Cuisine. Alcatra is a beef casserole served with a thin gravy and accompanied by sweet bread. Beef and chicken are plentiful on the islands, as are the locally caught fish and seafood. Tuna, swordfish, limpets and crab feature on many menus, as does the less familiar wreckfish. A coarse white fish that resembles halibut. The So Jorge Island cheese is internationally famous and is probably the most well known food product of the Azores. The So Jorge Island cheese is hard or semi hard and has a slightly peppery aftertaste. It is round shaped and weights from 7 to 12 kg, being cut in wedges. Chapter 19 Azorean Handicrafts the island's isolation created the need for the inhabitants to put their hands to work in order to overcome daily obstacles. 
Over time the advent of new modes of transportation exposed the region to the exterior, bringing it closer to Europe and the rest of the world. What was once considered of great necessity for the people, today represents a rich Azorian artistic technique portrayed in interesting works of ceramics, wood, weaving, wicker, and embroideries. The gifted hands of the Azorian woman have always embroidered and created lacework. Better than any other handicraft, embroidery show, through their purity, their soothing color scheme and perfection, the way of the island people. Here are some Azorian wicker baskets. Ceramics are also common to the islands. Examples include the hand-painted clay dishes produced in Lagoa and Vila Franca. So Miguel. The unique pottery of Santa Maria in the vases. Teapots and mugs from Graciosa. Chapter 20 Recommended Videos, The Azores Recommended Video, Top 10 Things to Do in the Azores Islands Portugal Recommended Video Top 6 Reasons Why the Azores Are Every Traveler's Dream Recommended Video, Best of Azores, 3 minutes, 35 seconds Recommended Video, Azores, Portugal, Vacation Travel Video Guide, 25 minutes, 37 seconds Recommended Video, São Miguel, Azores, Portugal, Vacation Travel Video Guide, 5 minutes 5 seconds. Recommended video, Teixeira. Azores, Portugal. Vacation travel video guide. 5 minutes. 5 seconds. Recommended video, Fial. Azores, Portugal. Vacation travel video guide. 5 minutes. 4 seconds. Recommended video, Pico. Azores, Portugal. Vacation travel video guide. 5 minutes, 5 seconds, YouTube Navigation The Azores, Table of Contents To play or pause the video, select the appropriate icon, or press the K key or the space bar. The right and left arrow keys will advance or retard the video by 5 seconds, respectively, in both the play and pause modes. If you see this in the upper right corner of the video, and you select the left mouse button, it will give you a list of recommended videos or a playlist of related videos. If you select this arrow and then exit the full screen, you will see a display of the chapters like this example. This is the listing of the first six chapters, and by scrolling down, you can see the rest of the chapters. For a more complete discussion of YouTube navigation, please go to this video using the link here. Thanks for watching.